Hey artists, welcome to another video. Today is going to be something that is a little different for me. I've never done a video like this before, but I absolutely love watching it when other artists do it. So I figured maybe people will enjoy seeing mine. And that is basically a sketchbook tour. Um, you can see one of my books here. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer first. I don't really use sketchbooks in the traditional way. And you'll see some older pieces in here that are, you know, kind of normal sketchbooky stuff. But ever since I started really um, digging into oil paints, it's kind of hard to do that in a sketchbook. Um, and I'm a big, you know, supporter of working alongside your strengths. And I personally have never successfully kept up an actual sketchbook. But what I do instead is I take artwork that I have completed, usually on canvas or other people, pieces of paper, and rather than just losing them, like these are pieces that I don't intend on selling, I usually tape them into a sketchbook so that they're still all in one place and they look all nice together. And it just, it makes for a really fun experience to be able to flip through. So as you can see, this is a, <laughs> a big boy here. And there's a lot of recent artwork in here, um, but there's a couple old ones as well. So let's begin the tour. Definitely not gonna have space with my tea here, so I'll move that off to the side. All right, so this here, if people are interested, I honestly have no idea where this sketchbook came from. I don't know what brand it is. It doesn't really have much on it. All I know is that I have had this particular book for a long time. Um, so yeah, very helpful, I know. <laughs> but let's jump in. So starting here with some old skull studies that I did. These are still from my university days when I was studying science. Um, I, <laughs> I did go to university. I have a degree in evolution and biodiversity. I didn't go for art. I actually took one single art class and that was uh, figure studies. And I took it in my very final year. I wish I had taken more art classes while I was doing it because it was so much fun. But anyways, um, I absolutely love biology. That was my thing. And in a lot of my classes, I would have access to skulls and various things and I would have them my own, like you could see here. I've got a little feline skull, which I suspect might actually have been the inspiration for these particular sketches here that I did. So I used to, and I, this is where I'm like, you know what, I really should go back and explore this medium more. But I used to use ink um, a lot for my more technical studies. And I just, it still is one of my favorite mediums, but I don't use it all that often. So this, you know, kind of makes me want to go back and play with more ink again. So you can see here, I have always been obsessed with skulls. Um, not so much in the morbid fashion, but I'm a science girl and I studied biology, like I have a degree in evolution and biodiversity, love animals, and the fact that the skeletal system is the foundation of our being and it, you know, gives us structure, it's just always been so fascinating to me. Um, so a lot of people have, you know, associate skulls with really, you know, negative and death related things. But to me, they kind of mean life. And that's why you're probably gonna see quite a few skulls throughout here. Ah, we've got some studies here. See, going back to ink, I used to have these uh, brush pens that were super fun, just doing some, you know, quick studies. Armadillo, uh, the worst animal in the world. <laughs> Canada geese, where I live, are incredibly aggressive and they can break arms and hurt you and they're very scary so I do not like them. <laughs> ah, we have a couple more here. Studies. Red panda. We've got a ring-tailed lemur here. I really love this brush stroke here. I suspect this one here was a pen that I refilled myself. Um, the ink looks a little less pigmented, a little more washed out or maybe that was the effect I was going for but Man, this is really making me want to go back and do some ink work. Oh, goodness, this book is very heavy. More studies here. I'm noticing we've got 2014. Goodness, what was it 2021? This is quite a while ago. We've got wallabies, we got clip springers. 
See, and I would always do little studies like this to basically get myself familiar with specific animals, mostly out of just interest. I never ended up creating any other artwork of clip springers or wallabies, but it just, I loved learning and I love animals and nature. So it was fun, educational. Ah, so we have another ink study here. This just looks like a ballpoint pen, which honestly used to be one of my favorite tools to create artwork with. It's have a really nice wolf here. I remember creating this piece and having so much fun with this fur texture here, how there's so much shape and flow. Love this. Ooh. I also used to do a lot of botanical studies as well. Um, this came in handy when I actually was studying plants, but I found that I used to do a lot of these on my own as well. So this here is actually canola. And I have no idea what this is. <laughs> if you know what this vegetation is, please let me know. But it had a neat little seed pod. Interesting. Ah, so these are a couple of thumbnail studies that I did when I was planning. I was commissioned um, to create the artwork for a textbook. So on a human anatomy and physiology, which I taught in university for years. I taught the labs absolutely loved it so I'm sure you can see where <laughs> you know why I tend to create a lot of like skulls and things like that but yeah so these are some of the thumbnail sketches I ended up going with kind of this design here and I believe I ended up using something like this on the back ah here we go more musculature love these as well and ink was just like the best tool these are just ballpoint pens that I would whip out in the middle of a lab and Go through and identify muscles. Same thing with the skull. Ah, and now we've got some other critters. We have a starfish and the weird anatomy of a starfish. <laughs> this was actually one of the few pieces that I used a blue pencil underneath first, and then I went on top and used my ink. Oh. Got more. We've got chitons, ventral side, and our dorsal side here. I love these anatomical studies. This is really making me want to go back and do some more. We've got snails. See these pieces here, I ended up using, I can faintly see the blue here for my initial sketch. Then I went in with pens. It looks like some sort of fine liner here rather than a ballpoint pen. And then I used to have refillable like brush tip pens that had a little reservoir on them and I would go and mix um, India ink with some water so I'd be able to create these more dilute washes here to build up a little bit more tone. So that's a good indicator of that there. Ah, you can tell what I was studying. <laughs> I've got all of these uh, interesting little microscopic critters from my classes and this was when I was in university studying this was one of my favorite tools to be able to learn the anatomy of things, and I obviously always use a visual element for learning. Let's see some more here. Oh my. Oh, now we're starting to get back into some bigger critters here. And as you can see here, none of these are actually drawn into the sketchbook itself. These were all other sketchbooks that I've then kind of Frankensteined into one just to keep everything in one place or scrap pieces of paper. Uh, these here were actually thumbnail studies I did for a commission for a friend, I believe. And these were just familiarizing myself with drawing wolves. Ah, this brings back memories. So I went through a pretty substantial phase where I dyed a lot of my own watercolor paper with tea and coffee and it just created the most beautiful tone but also like textures and then I would go back in over top with looks like ink I could see some colored pencil here we've got some white ink and I really should get back to that it was so much fun oh this is the beginnings of a tattoo design commission for a friend as well I have actually designed a lot of tattoo commissions for people None of my own though, all of my tattoos have not been designed by me. This was another really big tattoo design. Oh shocker, we have more skulls. 
Oh, these are old. So this was kind of like a character that I had designed at one point, um, nameless, but basically it was an elk with little candles on his antler. And this, this brings back memories. This I want to say is probably from, ooh, 2010 or 2011. This was a... This is a concept piece that I actually did for a painting that I gifted to my boyfriend at the time. He is now my fiance. And this piece, oh, this actually makes me smile because this concept sketch here, the finished painting is still sitting on his nightstand today. Oh, <laughs> so you can see here, I definitely, this is all graphite here. Um, and I probably should have fixed it because it still rubs off on my fingers. All right, now we're getting into some really good stuff here. So I used to be obsessed with fantasy creatures. I still am, um, but I don't, I don't indulge myself nearly as much as I should anymore. But I used to design a lot of really fun creatures. This is some sort of feline with a vegetation neckline, I don't know. Man, these are fun though. Most of these were done through ink. Um, these here were animal mashups that I did. So I've got a kangaroo and a gemsbuck, got a banded mongoose and a copy. Oh, these are so much fun. Ah, some more sketches here. Remember, I was doing a portrait for someone of a wolf that he wanted it to resemble his dog and his dog had a little snaggle tooth. So that's where this came in. Um, and then this also kind of goes along with the hybridized animals that I was always doing. Um, at one point I did a series of big cats, like a lion here, that had butterfly wings around their eyes, as you can see here. Oh, and then we got pages sticking together. Oh, some more fantasy creatures. I've got a wolf here with wings. I've got a blue jay with a locket. I've got bats and a banana and more bananas. <laughs> this here was also from university. Um, I was doing a research paper on, I believe, Seba's bats. And I figured I may as well flesh out my report a little bit with some illustrations. Why not, right? <laughs> oh, see, we got another cat here with some butterfly wings around its eyes. Shocker, another skull. <laughs> Ah, so this is the painting I was talking about before that was a gift for my fiance. This was the color study that I did for it. Um, and I still love this. There's a lot of copper metallic paint in there. So it like kind of shimmers in the light. This is fun too. I love dramatic lighting in my artwork. Um, this is kind of a little more of a depressing piece, but I've always loved like the bull skulls and I'm obsessed with anatomy so it's no shocker that I've been studying musculature here more crazy creatures so we've got a I don't know a weird hanging lady here that looks like she's part of a tree and some other bizarre creatures this elephant here with the ears turning into butterfly wings I believe I actually created a sculpture from this concept sketch at one point Man, these are a blast from the past ah okay so now we're starting to get into some more modern stuff. Um, a lot of those older sketches were from like probably anywhere between 2010 and 2017 maybe. Um, I've got tons of other sketchbooks hiding in my closet that I'm gonna have to go and dissect and kind of put together in this fashion again because it makes it so much fun to be able to flip through. But now we've got a lot of new pieces here. So most of these, if not all of them, are actually gonna be oil paintings that I've painted on canvas or something like that and then taped in. Um, and a lot of these are gonna be from creating tutorials for the Wildlife Painting Academy. And now that I'm kind of flipping through here, we've got a lot that are actually the original paintings behind um, the Joy Seeker Tarot deck that I created. So let's get going. Lovely tiger here. I really love how lush this looks. I use so many like nice rich glazes in here that give it a really nice vibrance. And that orange just pops so nicely against the green. So this is a fun piece to do. 
Got another tutorial that I did for the Wildlife Painting Academy. I believe I have a YouTube version of it as well that is shortened. Um, but yeah, cute little Arctic fox. This reference photo I actually took myself at our local zoo. These little Arctic foxes are so cute. They're so much smaller than I expect and they're so fluffy. So cute. I, I really enjoyed this study because I decided to push the color a lot. I was painting an Arctic fox. They're white. White is not as white as you would think in nature. It's quite colored actually, but I really wanted to push um, push my colors here, which is why there's so much blue inside the shadows and that the highlights are kind of a pale yellow gold color and that's nicely complemented by the background as well. And we've got this snow leopard portrait here. This was also for the Wildlife Painting Academy. Um, since this, you know, since these last couple of pieces, I've started working actually a lot bigger because it's just more fun for me. It gives me more room to play and yeah, but this one's really nice too. I believe this photo is also from my own collection um, from my local zoo. So this, is actually a fairly recent piece too within the past couple of months. A big tutorial inside the Wildlife Painting Academy. I love owls. I don't think that is any secret at all. Um, and this little guy was so cute. I took some liberties with this particular painting when it came to creating it because the reference photo that I followed for the tutorial inside the Wildlife Painting Academy was very monochromatic. Like this bird blended in really strongly with the tree and while that totally makes sense in nature, right? Like these animals, that's a form of camouflage for it. I didn't really want it to look that boring in my artwork. So I made it a little more saturated, played with the shadows a little bit, but that's the beauty about being an artist. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, so this is a portrait study that I did of my pup. Uh, this is Newbie. He is one of many names. He is my pet Corgi. More often than not, we call him Nubs. His full name, fun fact, is Anubis. Uh, yes, the Egyptian god of death, which we thought was absolutely hilarious because there's nothing death-like or scary about a fluffy little Corgi. Um, but yeah, so we call him Newbie and he is majestic and so derpy and I love him to bits. And he is actually sitting on my feet right now, fun fact. Um, yeah. I love 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 painting pet portraits and so yeah i tend to paint quite a few of my own dog for practice and just because it's fun and art should be fun oh look another one <laughs> this was another angle i was playing with a new sort of my pages are getting all messed up here i was playing with a new sort of style um, when it came to building these pet portraits where I would create a full sketch first with graphite and charcoal where I really laid down where all the major tones are going to go, give it some texture, and you can kind of see some of the pencil lines underneath here. And I absolutely love the way that looked. Plus it made staying true to like the actual identity of the animal that much better. So this here is a clipping of a palette that I have kept. Um, palettes are just, they turn out so pretty and it's such a shame to throw them away. So whenever I'm like done a painting, when I remember, I try to take the leftover paint there and like take a palette knife or a brush and just smear everything around into sort of like oh, a solid blob like this, let it dry and then cut it out. And it just, it creates the most beautiful patterns and textures and colors. And it just feels a little less wasteful. I know it's not, but I don't know. I like the way it looks. And I always put them in my sketchbook here. And they make pages very sticky. I have another one here, beautiful colors. Um, I love working with these pinks and purples and reds. Um, it's unfortunate that nature doesn't have a lot of tones like this, but I don't let that stop me. I paint a lot of animals in weird colors because it's fun. I just love the way this looks. I think I actually took a picture of this and is currently my phone wallpaper, actually. Ah, here we go. We are starting to get into the pages for the Joy Seeker tarot deck. 
Um, so for those who don't know, the beginning of this year, I decided I was gonna embark on the biggest project of my life regarding my artwork, and I was launching a Kickstarter campaign to create the Joy Seeker Tarot deck. Um, this was a, a culmination of all of the symbolism around nature that I love. Um, and yeah, the Kickstarter campaign was a crazy big success. I think I ended up with like 750% on top of my goal. Um, yeah, and printing is currently happening right now. I've got over 300 decks being printed right now, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so this was the very first piece of artwork that I created for it. I had an idea of what I wanted for these designs, but I needed to get something down on paper. So this was kind of the first iteration of it. And this ended up, it birthed the idea but I ended up having to do a lot of modifications. So for instance, I knew I wanted ink elements and I also wanted oil painted elements, but the two don't work super well together, especially since with my painted element, I wanted to have that canvas texture underneath and I can't get this sort of inked detail on canvas. So what I ended up doing is creating my oil painted parts separately, then created the inked parts on other paper, um, and then digitally I merged them together. So I had two different traditional components, one oil paint, one ink, and then I merged them together digitally. So this was the first pass, um, me realizing that ink and oil paint didn't work super well together, but it was all part of the experience. So this was the very first sort of concept for uh, what became the Joy Seeker Tarot deck. Ah, see, I love painting pet portraits. This bug-eyed beauty is, her name is DQ. Um, it stands for Drama Queen. And this is one of the cats that I grew up with. Goodness, she must be close to 15 right now. She is one of the tiniest cats I have ever seen. And usually, fun fact, you can tell the size of an animal relative to the size of their eyes. And as you could tell, she has massive eyes and that's because she's so small. Um, but yeah, she has definitely earned her name. Uh, she is the biggest drama queen. And I just had so much fun doing this portrait of her. I love the use of this sort of like dusty purple. It goes really well with the golden tones that's in that like tortoise, tortoise shell fur that she has. Ah, and this is fish. This is actually DQ's son. Um, he, she had babies when she was really young. We took her in and realized that she was pregnant and had a bunch of kittens and we ended up keeping two of the kittens. Um, his, his name is Fidget, but we always called him Fish. And then he recently passed away um, at like the ripe old age of 14. He had such a full life, but we do dearly miss him. So I had to paint him and then um, I have his brother, so her other son's painting on the back corner, he is a big fluffy orange tabby named Crush. Very original <laughs> naming. Ah, and here we go. So now we are kind of getting into the Joy Seeker Tarot deck paintings. Um, I've got a lot here, so I'm not gonna go through all of them, but we're gonna go through a couple. Um, so this one here, one of the challenges that I went through when I started painting the Joy Seeker Tarot deck was I needed to learn how to paint crystals. Um, that was one of the major design elements that I wanted in my deck and I had never painted a crystal. So I had to take a crash course, which is to say I should have looked for some form of instruction online. I did not. Um, I ended up, this was not the first time I tried painting them, thank goodness, but yeah, I figured it out. The way that I made it easiest for myself is I actually basically took like medium and oil paint um, in my base color. So here it was kind of like a pinky purple, put down a somewhat transparent layer of that paint with the medium. And then it kind of allowed me to carve out these highlights with a, like a, a flat brush. And I just made things really easy. Um, yeah, it's definitely a learning experience, but that was part of the beauty of the project. I'll leave a blank page here. This was another painting here. I believe this is the King of Cups. So you can see here, if you've taken a look at what the tarot deck actually looks like, you'll be able to see how the ink elements are gonna be composed around the painting. 
We've got the chariot. I believe this is the six of wands. There's 78 cards. I'm still trying to remember which is which. Um, but yeah, this is kind of a good opportunity for me to talk about how I created these. Um, I created all of the oil painting parts on loose canvas sheets. I've been absolutely loving these loose canvas sheets. They're primed. And then I started by transferring my sketch and then I took acrylic paint and I basically sprayed down the surface a little bit and then did a dilute wash of acrylic paint before I started with my oils. And that's where you get this really nice sort of brown texture base because I knew when I was designing this process, I wanted to, um, I wanted those ink elements to stand out. So I was gonna have a white background behind those ink elements. And if you look at the cards, you can actually see but that meant I needed to have some sort of background. And this perfectly suited my needs. And it just, it flowed, it was chaotic, and I just, I loved it. Oh, we have another here. We've got Queen of Pentacles. So, so part of the fun of designing the Joy Seeker Tarot deck was deciding what elements I wanted each of these suits to represent. So for instance, Pentacles um, is typically coins. So what I ended up doing was Pentacles is also the earth element. So I went with land creatures. So you'll see things, you know, that walk this earth. Um, and then I also went with things that are kind of round in shape. So I went with like round flowers. I went with fruit, different things like that. So you can see here, Queen of Pentacles uh, with her apples. We have Queen of Cups. So cups is water element. Um, and I decided to represent that with sea creatures and different things like that. Shells, vegetation that's in the water. And then we have, I believe this was the Eight of Swords. Um, swords was represented by birds and feathers. So you can see here, I've got a heron, one of my all time favorite creatures. And then we have the Three of Pentacles. So you can see here, Pentacles again was land creatures. So we've got these Pine Martins here um, with their apples as well. Wands was represented by bugs and crystals. And then cups, again, were represented by water creatures. So this here is the Knight of Cups, which I thought was kind of interesting because as it is to me, seahorses almost look like they're wearing armor, um, just the texture. And I thought that was really appropriate for the knight. We have, I believe this is the Knight of Pentacles. I should have wrote things down here, but. So yeah, one of the struggles I went through when I was designing the Joy Seeker Tarot is that I wanted this to be a source of beauty and light. And if you know anything about tarot, there are definitely some cards in there that are a little more negative, we will say. Um, and this was one of them, the three of uh, swords as well. So it was coming up with ways to turn an otherwise scary card into something that's a little more beautiful. Um, so that was a challenge that I absolutely loved. And yeah, I'm really, really proud of some of these designs that I came up with. So here we go. We've got King of Pentacles. You can see proteas here are kind of like round flowers. Um, and this is also, I love proteas and they're a symbol of South Africa and my fiance is from South Africa and it is my favorite place in the world to go visit. So figured it was also suitable to have a lion there. Let's see, three of swords here. Strength was one of the first designs that I ended up designing too. Ah, this is one of my all time favorite designs for the deck. This is the death card. Um, which goes along with, you know, me trying to take these scary cards and turning them into something that's a little more beautiful and not so scary. I mean, we've already talked endlessly how I love skulls. Um, and just paired with like the lotus flower in the place of the third eye just felt so appropriate.
And I think this is the last one that we're gonna leave this uh, sketchbook tour on. I'll probably go through and do the rest of my pages here in another video. But this one made me smile. So this was the, um, the devil card in the Joyseeker Tarot deck, which traditionally is represented by, you know, the devil and goats are associated with the devil, which always makes me smile because I grew up with goats and they're so goofy. And it just, it felt really endearing to me to still stick with that traditional symbolism for the devil. Um, and then adding these pretty flowers and different elements and stuff. But yeah, I definitely don't think goats are <laughs> the devil or evil. They are goofy, goofy creatures, especially the, the main goat that I grew up with is a, <laughs> a fainting goat. And if you've ever seen those, there's nothing scary about them, but yeah. So there's still lots of pages in here, but this video is already getting kind of long. So I'm going to make a, another video where I go through the rest of this. So hopefully you enjoyed looking through this sketchbook with me. This was totally a blast from the past. I have never done a video like this before, um, but oh my goodness, was it ever fun. I cannot wait to do more. And I kind of want to get back into ink and painting more skulls. So thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like what you see, leave a comment. Let me know if you want to see me do the rest of the pages and look at other sketchbooks. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.